So recently I've been noticing a lot of really cool visual effects in music videos using 3D scan techniques. The process for making these is pretty simple. These days making a 3D scan can be as easy as pulling out your phone and recording. Once you have that scan, there's a ton of different ways you can create different looks out of it or even composite it into your footage. So let's hop into this tutorial and show you how to make some 3D scan VFX. So step number one, how to scan. For this, all you need to do is record something. If you want the best results possible, try and get a 360 degree video. For this, you can just place an object down somewhere and just walk around it, recording it with your phone. Of course, there's a lot more fancy methods for doing this, which you can look into and invest more money into if you'd like. But the nice thing about these scan VFX, they don't have to be picture perfect. So I think a phone recording works perfectly fine. Once we have that recording, we need to transfer that into an actual 3D scan model. For that, I like to use the website Polycam. I'm pretty sure they have an app as well if you'd like to do the recording straight into the app. So I actually found some stock footage where we have our subject here rotating in 360 degrees. This will work perfectly for our scan. I'm going to load that into Polycam and I'm going to start my scan. So here are my results. What I want to do is now bring this into a 3D software. So I'm going to click up here in the top right to export and I'm going to choose the free option here to export a GLTF. So now we can open up our 3D software and in my case I'm going to use Blender because it is free. I just need to go up to File, Import, GLTF and here is our 3D scanned model. So now that you have that 3D scan, there's so many different things you can do to manipulate this and create a cool look out of it. I'm going to walk you through the basics here and then I'm going to show you some examples of some different VFX looks as well as ways where you can actually composite this back with your real world footage. So first up, we're going to talk about texturing and the benefit of different lighting setups. The great thing about 3D is you have full control over the lighting, the camera, the material. So if you want to make this a stone marble statue, you can easily achieve that by creating a procedural stone material in Blender. Again, millions of tutorials out there for that. Or you can even just go and download some free stone material online and just plug it in. Again, that's just one example. You guys can make this look however you want, including keeping the original skin material or mixing some crazy material with the skin material. It's really all up to you. In terms of lighting, I'm going to use my Director 3D plugin here, which I made for music video directors. If you want to check that out, the link is down below. In that plugin, I have a full lighting studio section here and choose any of these preset lighting looks, anything from cinematic split screen to eerie ghost story look. So once you've settled on the polishing and design process for how your 3D scan looks, let's talk about some of the fun things you can do with this by adding some different crazy effects to your scan. Now we see this a lot in music videos, whether there's this pixel distortion, 3D scan lines making you look like you're in the matrix. If you really want a specific look, just find a tutorial that you can implement into this workflow. I'm going to show you my favorite here using a simple geometry node setup. So first off, you're going to want to switch over to the geometry node workspace and click new. Once you've done that, we're going to click shift a here and we're going to search for a delete geometry node. Go ahead and place this in between here. Next up, we're going to click shift a again and search for a compare node. And we're going to plug that into the selection for the delete geometry. Next, we're going to search and add in a position node as well as a separate XYZ node. And we can connect the position to the vector here. Let's take the Z and plug that into the A value. And now what we've created is a simple little slider here on the compare node to be able to delete the geometry along the Z axis. So it allows for you to create some cool little transitions. We can actually add on to this as well. I'm going to search for a math node and set that to multiply. That way you can delete more or less from the selection based on how much you put up that slider. Now I'm going to duplicate that math node and set it to add. And we're going to use that add node to add in a noise texture node. And this will give a little bit more shape to our deletion. So we can connect the factor to the value of the add. And now you guys can mess around with that noise node, change around any of the features to get whatever specific cutaway pattern you'd like. And yeah, there we go. Now you can control this slider from the compare to have this sort of stylized transition. So if we want to, we can go back over to our timeline. I'm just going to drag this open so I can see my timeline here. I'm going to start at the beginning and hovering over the compare node. I'll click I on my keyboard just to set a keyframe. 
I'll drag a little bit and I'll just bump up that value and then click I again to lock in that keyframe. So we made a little growth animation for our 3D model. Again, a very basic setup that you guys can build on. If you want to add scan lines into this, it's very simple. Mixing in an emission texture. In a little bit, I'm also going to show you some pixel distortion effects. But before we do that, let's talk first about compositing and then we'll mix those distortion effects in with the compositing. Now, anytime we're trying to mix and match a 3D model with actual footage, it's a good idea to track your original footage. I'm not going to spend a ton of time showing you how to track in Blender. It can be a pretty lengthy process depending on your footage and a bunch of other variables. My best advice for this is to shoot on a tripod if you really want to do this compositing between a person and a 3D model. That way you don't have to worry about the tracking. So to start this off, I'm going to go up to File and Import Images as Planes to add in my original footage so that I can actually see that in the background and make sure everything's lining up. Next, I'm going to make sure my camera is perfectly in frame with my footage so that when I take this back into After Effects later, it'll all match up perfectly. Then I'm going to scale up my 3D scan to make it match the size of our original subject matter here. I'm going to go over to the rotation and I'll rotate the head so that it's starting at the exact moment as our original footage. Now from here, again, because we're on a tripod, the camera isn't moving around. All I need to match is the slight rotation of our person turning in 360 degrees. So I'm going to do that by eye just by going to my 3D scan, going to the data properties and adding a keyframe to the rotation. To make sure that my rotation is perfect here, I'm actually going to switch over to the graph editor and I'm going to change around this Bezier curve here to smooth out this turn and to make sure it's aligning with the original turn of my footage. Once you have these two synced up, you can mix and match all of those other steps I showed you before with your lighting, with your visual effects and transitions, as well as with your textures to make transitions and composite over your real footage. So for example, here's a quick look of what the transition will look like when we add in that geo node transition I showed you before. And you can start to see we're already starting to get some really cool results and, and it's giving us a foundation to work off of to make some really cool visual effects with this. So I'm going to use this opportunity here to show you some pixel effects. I know that you, those are used in combination with a lot of this 3D scanning. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the stone skin example here. We're going to go back just to the base normal skin and we're going to try and composite some face effects over top of our original. So to do this, you're going to want to go over to the modifier section and we're going to click add modifier and we're going to add in a displace modifier. Click on these two little slider icons. That's going to open up the texture for the displacement straight in this window. You guys can experiment with whatever look you want for the displacement just by changing around the texture settings as well as changing around this strength slider over here in the actual displace modifier. And you can see it's already starting to give you this crazy distortion over the face. Now, if you want this pixelated noise, we could just go for the noise texture. Everything will get very spiky. To compensate for that, we're just going to lower down the strength to something like 0.1. So here is what my final texture is looking like. I went with distorted noise and just, again, just kind of messed around with the sliders. You guys can copy what I'm showing on the screen or tailor things to however you want them. You can also keyframe the value of the noise here. So I'm going to set a little keyframe just to start it at zero and then just crank it up so that it'll gradually go from normal face to crazy distorted pixelated face. If you'd like to control where the distortion is, for example, you want it only on the cheek or a part of the face, you can select your scan and click tab to go into edit mode and then we can just grab our lasso tool and select the area where we would like our distortion to be so i'm just going to select the left cheek here once you've done that you can click on this green triangle to go to the data properties and we're going to click new to create a new vertex group i'm going to name this noise and then click assign once you've done that you can go back into the modifiers here you're going to see this vertex group drop down you can change that to be the noise vertex group we just set up and now you're only going to see the distortion on this section of the face that we chose. So this looks really cool, especially when you're sticking to just the original skin texture. You fully composite over the shape of the original face and kind of create that illusion. Now you guys can keep messing around with this, creating keyframes, creating different animations. What I'm going to move on to is the lighting aspect of this, because again, in this case, we want the 3D skin texture to match up with the original footage as best as possible. So I actually really liked how this looked in just the basic viewport shading mode. I thought it was a very neutral flat color. What I did to copy that viewport shading to the rendered shading, if you guys click on this arrow in the top right, 
you'll be able to see the default HDRI environment textures that they use just for the viewport shading. If you want, you can change those around and just see what it looks like with different environment lighting. If you'd like to replicate this viewport shading with your rendered shading, go over to the shader editor and change the dropdown from object to the world settings. Now here where it says background, if you have Node Wrangler enabled, you can just click Control T to add in this environment texture loadout by default. If you don't have Node Wrangler, just go to your edit preferences, enable that. Now here where it says open, we're going to find where Blender stores its default environment shading. So you can just right click on Blender in your toolbar, right click and go to properties and then open file location. This should be similar steps on both Windows and Mac. Once you're in your Blender folder, just go to 4.0 data files and then studio lights. And then here in the world section, you can find all of the default HDRI. So we can just drag and drop this straight into our world settings and then connect this to our background. Now, whenever we go back to that rendered view, it should look exactly the same as our viewport shading with that neutral lighting setup. So this should work well enough for our compositing. Now we're ready to render this all out and bring it into After Effects to actually do the compositing. And this is the part where people go in the comments and they say, you can do all of this in Blender. I'm sure you can. I'm just much more familiar with After Effects. You can choose however you want to composite this. So I'm going to hide all of the unnecessary parts from the render, such as the image to play in background video, as well as anything else. I'm going to enable transparent in the render settings, and then I'll set up in my output settings where I want to render this out. Once that's all taken care of, I'll go to render and render animation. Once I've rendered that out, I can hop into After Effects to actually do any of the compositing. And for that, it's very simple. First, I'm going to drag in my original footage and just find the spots that I used for my 3D scan. Next, I'm going to right click in my project bin and go to import multiple files. And I'm going to import in that 3D render that I just pulled from Blender. Big one here, make sure that the frame rates are matching up, especially before you render everything out. After Effects automatically imports these image sequences at 30 FPS. So just hover over your footage, check the FPS, right click on your 3D render, go to interpret footage main, and then set the frame rate to what you need it to be. Now that everything is properly lining up, you guys have a few options for compositing. You can set up a simple mask so that the 3D scan is showing where you want it to be. If you need to keyframe the mask path as well as playing around with the feather value here, just to make this blend. Uh, you can also add any curve effects, color correction, just to match the 3D skin with the original skin. We did most of the movement matching in Blender, so the hard part is already done here. We just want to make sure that this is seamlessly integrating as best as possible. Now, another thing I want to touch on is camera movement. And I think this is one of the largest benefits with your 3D scans. If you scan this large environment or even just one person, you have the freedom of control of a camera in your 3D software. So I can walk down a street, scan it all, hop into Blender and make a camera zip and zoom all throughout this environment. Doing this is pretty easy. You just want to click Shift A and create a Bezier curve, which will act as the path for your camera to move through. Then you want to parent that camera to the Bezier curve using a constraint. And then finally, in your render settings, you want to turn on motion blur so that you get that realistic, fast moving look as your camera glides through the scene. So yeah, that's about it, guys. I was pretty brief on the whole camera aspect of it. I just wanted to show the benefit of 3D scans with camera movement. I'm going to make a fuller, longer scale video all about camera movement, uh, maybe make some like car chase scenes, something like that in the future. If you guys want to see that or any other content related to this, let me know in the comments down below. This video is like a lot of my past few videos have all started just from comments you guys leave below. So you guys are the ones really fueling the content on this channel. And I want to thank you for that. Other than that, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. And I'll see you guys in the next one.